遊んでもいいけどアメちょうだいトリッコアトリート Hi, I'm Dabini and I'm here today to help players new to Guilty Gear Exard Rev 2 learn Jacko. This series will cover everything from her buttons, basic controls, Oki Zeme, combos, and the strategy behind making the most of this extremely unique and very fun character. Jacko's uniqueness as a character is present in every aspect of her play even within her combos, pressure, and okizeme. She doesn't have consistent access to damaging combos due to the fact she has no specials that directly attack the opponent. Her longer and more damaging combos require certain counter hit or 6p starters, and red roman canceling to continue a combo has diminishing returns because of the aforementioned lack of non-setup specials. Even if she is able to land a really big starter, by the nature of how her servants and combo theory functions, her children will usually mess up the combo anyway. Add in the fact her pressure cannot loop itself without servant's aid, and it starts to become clear just how deep Jacko's unorthodox game plan goes. At a baseline, Jacko will usually want to be routing most hits she gets early on into a 3H, 2H, or 4D knockdown in order to safely set up houses without the opponent's interference. She has good Gatlings that will semi-consistently route into any of her multiple knockdown options, depending on spacing and if there's servants nearby. Once she's set up, any other hit she gets will come down to structuring the combo to take as long as possible to complete, while still aiming for opportunities to set up if she needs them. It is important to note that long, damaging combos are not common with this character, and Jacko will almost always be better off playing the long game in a death by a thousand cuts manner, than sacrificing opportunities to work towards her wind condition just to deal a bit more damage. That being said, if you do get one of these good hits and are under the right conditions to perform a damaging combo, go for it. Jacko's combo theory outside of Gatling streams and without servants around can be simplified into this basic four-part structure. Gatling into a button that pops up on hit or simply start with an air hit. Do a jump cancelable button, jump cancel into an airstream, and then do jumping 4D with any downward direction. Because jumping 4D with any downward direction grants hard knockdown, this structure allows Jacko to choose to go for hard knockdown with Okizeme. If servants are below her, she can do an off the ground hit or OTG with them to perform further juggles with the servant's aid. Take a look at some of these sample combos to better understand the way this works in practice. Counter hit 2S and 2H are Jacko's most damaging meterless starters that follow a different theory than usual, called the gravity combo. The structure and conditions for the gravity combo are far too involved to be explained here, but if you're interested, go check out the gravity combo section on her Dustloop wiki, where I go into extensive detail on it. I also plan to make a video covering this at a later date. The final major thing to know about Jacko's combos is that most of her heavier buttons, be it close slash, 5H, or 2H, 
are super cancelable. Because of the high amount of hit stun on her 214 slash super Calvados, Jacko is able to cancel any of these into Calvados and then jump to pick up her standard air series. The Calvados extension can be done off light starters as well as heavy ones. Here's some examples. Once there are many servants around, most of her combos deteriorate unless she lands a 5d8 homing jump. In these situations, the servants OTG the opponent when they should otherwise be knocked down. At this point, she will mostly just be juggling the opponent between herself and her servants with 5p until hopefully she can get a jump cancel or 6h into an air series. The highly volatile and unpredictable nature of servant swarm situations makes comboing during them less of a science and more of an art form. Many times you will not be getting knocked down off these situations, but that doesn't mean that you're in a bad position. Mess around with the sequencing and don't stress if a combo black beats or drops. By virtue of having a lot of servants out at once, and leveled up houses, Jacko is, by definition, at the advantage, and all the player has to do is avoid getting hit so as not to lose it. Some notes on Gatling strings. Far Slash does not consistently combo into three heavy from a lot of ranges, or at all on some characters. If you really want the knockdown, making sure to stay aware and route differently if you don't think Far Slash 3H will combo is important. Her air combo series is JS, double jump cancel, JS, both hits of JH, J4D, plus any downward direction. There are some combos that stray from this, but this will almost always be the what you do. IAD after a 6P first hit of 6H Gatling is a good thing to be able to do because it has very good corner carry. The options that Jacko has on an opponent's wake up to press advantage, like most characters, depends on what move she knocked down with in the first place. Off a 3H knockdown, she does not have enough time to do more than one setup and still get any kind of real OP. But depending on the situation, choosing to forego Oki for two setups can be the best option. She must link a house set or organ command from 3H, as 3H cannot be special cancelled, but she'll still have time to hit the opponent meaty if she only does one setup. Close slash is plus three on block, and the range it leaves you at afterwards is very good for staggers and tick throws. It has poor proximity before it turns into a far slash, which makes it easily thrown by the opponent if you misspace it to be too close. Spacing it too far results in the far less advantageous meaty far slash to come out. Though this can be good in some situations, more on that later. Quick aside. In older Guilty Gears, the defending player can throw the opponent out of a meaty button on Wake Up if the button is performed at point-blank range. This is true in Exard Rev 2. To avoid this, you must space your meaty button so the throw box on it is out of range from the opponent's character's throw range, resulting in them attempting to throw on Wake Up being counter hit due to their 5H or 6H coming out instead of a throw. Different characters have different throw ranges, so against characters like Eno, Bedman, and Potemkin, 
who have the largest throw range in the game. You must be careful when spacing your knees with close slash. Because 3H can knock down at a lot of different ranges, when choosing to close slash as a meaty off a 3H house set knockdown, micro walking back or forward to correct spacing is a good habit to get into. The other best meaty option for Jacko is 2K, which is also plus 3 on block like close slash, but covers a large amount of space for its speed as well as being a low. The drawback of Meaty 2K is that the button is only active for a total of 3 frames, so timing it to hit truly Meaty can be difficult. Use the open source application Reversal Tool to practice the timing against the training dummy that is set to press 2P the first frame it wakes up. A link to download Reversal Tool will be in the description. Just like Close Slash, you can be thrown out of a point-blank 2K meaty, so off longer range 3H knockdowns. Going for a 2K as a meaty over Close Slash is preferable because of its range and not being a proximity normal. The final Oki option off a 3H knockdown is to perform a safe jump. If you don't know, a safe jump is a jumping button that is timed so the active frames will hit meaty as the opponent wakes up. So if the opponent does an invincible reversal on wake up, you will be able to block it, like so. Jacko does not get any setups and a safe jump off a 3H knockdown at any range. You may sometimes see Jacko players doing something that looks like a safe jump, after doing a setup, but it's not real and is used more as a knowledge check against characters without a DP than anything else. You will almost always use JH as your safe jump button because it's easy to time due to do its large amount of active frames and block stun, as well as hit stun. JH also has a hitbox on both of Jacko's feet so you can even do cross-up safe jumps. Just make sure to block the other direction if they do actually reversal. Use reversal tool to help make sure your safe jumps are real. Another option off a 3H knockdown that doesn't lead to any kind of direct oki is to hit the opponent off the ground or OTG for short, and then perform a short combo that knocks them far enough away for a setup or two. The obvious downside of this option is that it returns you to neutral, and if the opponent texts forward, your setups are not truly safe. That being said, this is often a good option against characters with a DP, so you are able to set up houses or do an organ command without worrying about their invincible reversal on wake up. The standard 3H OTG combo is 2K, 5P, several times, 5K. The amount of 5Ps you choose to do is usually dependent on how far away Jacko was when the 2K OTG. A 2H knockdown is one of Jacko's best because it allows for a house set and a safe jump, although if 2H is mashed for more hits, this is not the case. 2H's special cancel window is right before the final hit, and very easy to miss. Practice the timing of setting a house into a safe jump, so you can take advantage of this great Okizeme opportunity. Off a 4D or J4D knockdown, the Oki situation changes depending on what direction you spit them in. If you spit them directly forward or backward, you are able to do one or two setups, but without an opportunity for Oki or a meaty. Safe jumping is not an option with the forward or backward knockdown due to spacing. In a diagonal downward direction, 
you have many of the same options as you do off a 3H knockdown, because house sets and organ commands also must be linked from a 4D knockdown. Safe jumping from this distance is a bit difficult, but worth knowing how to do. You cannot do a setup and a safe jump. Directly downward gives you the same options as off a 3H, though spacing is crucial as to not get thrown. Often, if you want the hard knockdown, the downward direction instead of forward or backward is best if there are servants around, because servants are notorious for OTGing the opponent and ruining hard knockdown opportunities. Off a 6D knockdown, it is a bit difficult, though not impossible, to get any kind of real Oki because of the spacing it leaves you at afterwards. In the corner though, you can OTG it into knockdown solo, and anywhere with servants around. You also have something you can do to chase backdash, where you will hit meaty if they decide not to wake up backdash, but be able to catch their backdash if they do. Time a meaty 2k, and visually confirm the backdash before immediately pressing bar slash. Bar slash is big enough that it catches their backdash and can usually be routed directly into a 4D. Thanks for watching. Next time we'll be covering how to structure pressure, as well as the unique strategy and philosophy behind playing Jacko. I've been Tuffy. Thanks for watching and see you on the flip side.